I'm going to continue our discussion of how to solve equations by now doing some examples without using a model. As you guys recall from the previous video, our um, main goal when we're trying to solve an equation is to isolate the variable. That means get it by itself so we can figure out how much it weighs. And the way we're going to do that is by using something called inverse or opposite operations. It's kind of like we are undoing the operations that are going on with this variable. And I'll show you how that works. So we've got 2 times x plus 4 is equal to 12. So we've got two different operations going on here. We've got multiplication, because 2 times x, and then we've got addition. So the way that you undo, or kind of like unwrap the equation, is that you do the operations in the opposite of the order of operations. You normally would take care of the multiplication first and then take care of the addition according to order of operations, but we're kind of what we call undoing the equation. So we're doing it, we're doing it backwards. So instead of dealing with this two times x first, I am going to deal with this plus four. Well, what's the inverse of plus four? Of course, it's a minus four. So plus four and minus four are gonna cancel each other out. So if this were a balance beam like we had in our previous example, in our previous movie, all of a sudden our equation would have just gone thunk out of balance because I would have taken four away from this side of the equal sign. Sometimes I like to draw a line here through the middle to remind me that this is kind of like the middle of the equation. So I took four off of here, but I didn't take four off of that side. So now, in order to keep it in balance, I've got to do 12 minus four, which means it's going to be eight. So now I've got two times x is equal to eight. Of course, the in I've got multiplication still going on here. The inverse of multiplication is division, because that's the opposite. That's how you undo multiplication, is to divide. So I'm gonna divide by two, so that is going to leave me with just a plain x. If I have two x's, I divide them into two groups. That's going to leave me with just a plain x. If I were working on a balance beam, though, I divided my left-hand side by 2, but I didn't do anything over here. So again, it would go thunk. My balance beam would go kind of out of order. It would be unbalanced. So to put it back into balance, I've got to divide this side by 2. So x is equal to 4. The cool thing about equations is that once we get an answer, we can always go back and check to make sure we did it correctly. So I'm going to take my original equation right here, and I'm pretty sure that x is equal to 4, but I can actually prove it. So my original equation right here was 2 times x plus 4 is equal to 12. So instead of doing 2 times x, if I think x is equal to 4, I'm going to do 2 times 4. 2 times 4 is 8. 8 plus 4, yep, it's 12. So I know for sure that I did this problem correctly. Inverse operations work for any equation. You just always isolate the variable, that is get it all by itself by doing the opposite of what's going on in the equation. So I've got division and I've got subtraction. Remember from what I just said in our previous example that when you're undoing, which is basically what you're doing, you've got operations going on here with the variable, you're going to undo them, which means you're going to do them in the opposite of the order of operations. So I would normally deal with division first, but I'm going to deal with this subtraction first. How do I undo subtracting 7? Well, of course, I add 7. Minus 7 and plus 7 are going to cancel out. I'm still left with an x divided by 3. It hasn't gone anywhere. It's still there. Of course, if I were dealing with a balance beam, my balance beam would have just gotten out of whack because I just added 7 to this side of my equal sign, but I didn't add 7 over here. So, of course, I'm going to fix that situation. 12 plus 7 is 19. So now I've got my mystery number divided by 3 is equal to 19. Well, what is the inverse or opposite of division? You guessed it. It's going to be multiplication. So if I multiply by 3, that's going to cancel out. I did divide by 3. So if I do the opposite, that's going to cancel out. Multiplying by 3 cancels out dividing by 3. So that's going to leave me with just an x. 
Of course, if I were working with a balance beam, what would happen? It would get out of whack. So I multiplied this side by 3, so I've got to multiply this side by 3. 19 times 3 is 57, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm pretty sure that x is equal to 57. The cool thing again about equations is I can take my original equation, put it back in, put my answer into it, and see if I'm right. So x divided by 3 minus 7 is equal to 12. So instead of x divided by 3, I'm going to put in 57 divided by 3. 57 divided by 3 is, let's see, 19? Yep. So 19 minus 7, is it equal to 12? Yes, it sure is. So I know for sure that I solved this equation correctly. Now the reason I'm showing you how to solve stuff with inverse operations, in class a lot of the time you guys say, well I can do this in my head. I can figure out that x is equal to 4. The reason that I'm teaching you how to do inverse operations is because then you end up with stuff like this, where you've got fractions in the equation, and a lot of us just aren't so good at sitting there and figuring that out in our heads. The good news is inverse operations still works no matter what. So I've got the fraction one-third, and it's sitting right next to my x. So of course, when it's sitting right next to the x, that means it's going to multiply, that means multiplication. I've got adding six. We've seen from our previous two examples that we undo the equation in the opposite of order of operations. So normally we would do multiplication first according to our please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. But when we're undoing the equation to get the variable by itself, we actually have to undo it in the opposite order. So I'm going to deal with this addition first. What's the inverse of adding 6? Of course it's minus 6, which that's going to cancel. So now I've got 1 third times x is equal to 12. So I still don't have that x isolated. So 1 third times x, what's the opposite of multiplying by 1 third? Of course, you know it's dividing by one-third. I divided this side by one-third, which is going to cancel and leave me with just an x. If I divide this side by one-third, I've got to divide this side by one-third. Hopefully, we remember from seventh grade, how do you divide by a fraction? Remember our little expression we used when dividing by fractions? I don't know why. Flip the second and multiply. Twelve times three is 36. 36 over 1 just simplifies to a 36. So x is equal to 36. I'm going to go back and check my answer by using the original equation, which is 1 third times my mystery number plus 6 is equal to 12. Thank goodness you guys are allowed to use your calculators also. So you can just actually type in, instead of 1 third times x, 1 third times 36. 1 third times 36, you guys will figure out, is 12. Let's see here. Oh, you know what? I wonder if you guys at home realize the mistake that I made a second ago. Let me back up just a second here. So look, I actually made a very common boo-boo. And this explains why a mistake could happen to anybody, even math geniuses like us teachers. So 1 third times 36 is 12. 12 plus 6 is not 12. So that means I made a mistake somewhere. And if you look back as I was solving my problem in my very first step, I subtracted 6 from this side of my equation. But what did I forget to do? I didn't subtract 6 from that side of my equation. So that actually gives you a great example of how that's going to give you the wrong answer. So 12 minus 6 is 6. 6 divided by 1 third. Now the rest of our steps will still make sense. Because we divided this side by 1 third, we're going to divide this side by 1 third. Remember when dividing fractions, I don't know why, flip the second and multiply. 6 times 3 is 18. 18 over 1 is 18. Now let's go back and check our answer. So instead of 1 third times x plus 6 equals 12, we're going to do 1 third times 18. 1 third times 18 is 6. 6 plus 6 is 12. So thank goodness, now I know I did it correctly. 
And I'm kind of glad that I made that mistake because it shows you at home the importance of going back and checking your answer because it's really easy to make those mistakes. Last but not least, 2 fifths times x minus 6 is equal to 24. Go ahead and pause the video for a second and try to work it yourself and see if you can come up with the right answer. Remember, in my class, you are allowed to use a calculator for this particular part. I'm going to go ahead and work it, though. I'm assuming you paused the video and tried to work it yourself. So I've got multiplication here. I've got subtraction here. Which one am I going to undo first? I'm going to undo the subtraction. The opposite of subtracting 6 is adding 6. That's going to cancel. Leave me with 2 fifths times x. Now, the step I forgot last time, if I added 6 to this side, I've got to add 6 to this side. 24 plus 6 is 30. So I've got 2 fifths times x is equal to 30. So how do I undo multiplying by 2 fifths? You guessed it. I'm going to divide by 2 fifths. That's going to leave me with an x. If I divided this side by 2 fifths, I'm going to divide that side by 2 fifths. Remember how we divide by a fraction. When dividing fractions, I don't know why, flip the second and multiply. So this is really a 30 over 1. Of course, you guys are allowed to use calculators, but I like to work without them when I can. So I can actually do a little bit of canceling here. 2 goes into 2 once. 2 goes into 30 15 times. 15 times 5 is 75. 1 times 1 is 1. 75 over 1 is 75. Now I'm going to go back and double check my answer. I learned my lesson the last time. And I'm just going to use my calculator. So instead of 2 fifths times x minus 6 equals 24, I'm going to do 2 fifths times 75. And if I do that, let's see here, I should get, so let's see, 75 times 2. Let me use my handy little calculator here. Equals 150 divided by 5. Okay, so that's going to give me 30. And 30 minus 6 is in fact 24. So I know for sure that I solved it correctly.